share some software with you and we're going to play along with a couple of things here. Let's go right to number 11 failing. Let's go with the bottom of number 11. Disregarding clearly that FIU put out the documents and retracted them but the documents showing that there were multiple and I have in the other videos multiple breaks cracks in in numbers 11 and number 2 at uh, different different um, parts of the column of the diagonal going up the column I think four on each side also we have a breakdown here as we know uh, watch what I do with this software so I overlay this now this is not the angle the angle would could would be different but nevertheless they have the banner up here we don't see the cracks I'm gonna give you all data here in quite a few images so here's the uh, banner now this is the edge of the uh, the photograph the best photograph I could find of this angle it was a flyover a uh, flyover and I took a screenshot okay and this is the edge of the column of number 12 so this would be number 11 now let's go ahead and back that out a little bit and so this is where the crack is on number 11 and let's give you this all of these little images here but so you're going to have to bear with me and as I find each one because each one's going to offer data for example this one's going to offer the count of the reinforcements and it's going to be approximately um, 13 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 that's going to come in handy because you know what let's just check, race that let's race to that one real quickly now we count look at the back of this you see this seam here this seam is on the back of the bridge um, as it's in place and it's unharmed unharmed the back of it's in place no shearing took place through this column none took through took place through this column this is number 12 that's number 11 that's what the other forms is you know I keep coming back to that because now it appears the NTSB is trying to focus on the bottom of 11 which uh, is just a bad, bad thinking. All right, I want to show you that uh, BPA appears right, uh, right here. Um, has a professional equipment. Now maybe they loaned it out to a, uh, this the vest and everything to a local news channel. This guy does have a uh, wireless system on, and it appears to be a one-man crew, which then puts me back to, this is the crew members there, and, and they're having a nice interview. All right. I'm going to get some more data on that. Update. Seawater, uh, update of the Seawater FIU Bridge Project has been posted to view. Please visit the Seawater FIU Bridge Facebook page. You guys can go there. I don't have Facebook. All right. Let's jump to this. I guess I will go through it in order, and you guys are going to put it together. For post tension bar, anchor detail, see back, back span. Okay. There's one piece of data in here. Let me find it. Verify post tension bar forces will be with lift off test verify post tension bar forces with lift off test now there are different versions of lift off test but you can pause this video you'll see this four page statement specifically the last page is uh with a highlighted little section for you guys all right uh, so they already completed two on the other side and one here so they should have done lift off test as they completed the other end so we should have, be able to get data from those uh, recordings. Um, for temporary, this is a hinge, you guys. Um, so reinforcements, one, one of two drawings. All right, that's that one. Now, I'm going to show you something else that's going to be pretty cool in these images coming up. I'll show you that hinge in another. Well, here's showing it to you now. Here's the hinge. That's that detail here that they speak of. And I gave it to you in the link in the, in the comments in my previous section. Now we do, we've got down here again. Um, post tension bars, members two will be grouted, will not will not be grouted, and will be de-stressed after main span construction is complete. Do not remove bars. Well, it would be kind of difficult removing the bars anyway. They'd have to unthread the, the bar itself. This would be permanent. So that's just a waste. So these are, are you know we know where we are with that now right now for temporarily. Uh, hinges for temporary hinge. All right, this is just a style of uh, hinge. Uh, 
1956, something like that. It's just a style of hinge. For temporary, just, you can just, you know, the, the, the guy that invented it. Hinge detail, C main span. Again, temporary. So once you put the bridge together, this was no longer going to be, no longer um, uh, required for its abilities. So again, that puts it back to, to me that this was designed for racking initially to keep the bridge from racking, you know, left and right, keeping it stable for one reason or another. Nevertheless, um, the, the support should have stayed in there while they transport it. And we already talked about that. It's going to be more coming up. Let's slide down. That's a duplicate that shows the 2017. Oh, wait a minute, lost my, uh, there we go. Um, this was the image I put in the other one showing basically when they were transporting how uh, their forces changes, becomes tension, and that's probably why they have the extra post-tension bars, but why I have it here also in this uh, video to show these embedments. This is that embedments in, inside, here, here it is lying here at this point. I think it's right about here, or maybe it goes up to there, but nevertheless, that embedment is through the deck and it's, it's through the column and it's lining up there. Let's do that again on the bottom of 12. So we go back to it. Here is 12. Here is the embedment. It crosses over. If you see, this is the plane. It crosses over just so slightly. So when this fell over, when it acted like a hinge and did its damage, it ripped the bottom of it up. Uh, ripped the bottom of it up a little bit. Did a little damage, as we see, right here, uh, tearing apart. But nevertheless, you guys can find many images. That's the cement. Uh, transition to the uh, outside of the canopy, uh, bottom deck, bottom deck. Okay. I want to show you this. This is uh, from um, F. Dot. So I'm getting you their details, and it's it's giving you an idea of uh, benefits of post tensioning. So as forces come down, these are forces. This will be a, a roller a move, a allowable roller, if you will, and that's pinned. Okay, so as the forces come down, it opens, this is the way I always show you guys those V's I'm talking about, the upside down V's. So the forces come down, it opens up the bottom there. And you see, it is typically in the middle, but in this case we have multiple different forces. And um, you would imply that most forces are in the center here because they, they used a smaller crack here. It's just a drawing, all right, but you can even get data from that. The reinforcement they're using here is a uh, rebar reinforcement. They're not post tensioning in this diagram. It would be. So this is uh, just for illustration. But nevertheless, the forces come down. It does this, but this is important because just don't don't mind that this is flat. This will also work in the diagonal. The same idea of forces being this way, um, and that would be created this little bow once you increase post tensioning at the top of this. Then you get that same idea of opening up the bottom. Same as when you do this one, when you post tension that one, um, increasing which they did, and then they left this to four. That would have the effect of opening up the bottom. And remember, we have existing cracks here that the, uh, the NTSB decides they're only going to tell us about the one down here pretty much in three images. Uh, this is the transporter again. Reading the, the, the diagrams, and I always hope you guys catch it when I put this stuff up here. A couple of you guys are pretty bright on catching my uh, catching things, and I'm, that's good because I can correct that stuff in the comments below. Because I normally don't listen to the video again until hours later when I can make time. And by then I can see your corrections and I go, yep, and I make the corrections of it. And then I listen to the video, but I first try to find corrections in with whatever you guys find. Sometimes I even I get my grammar wrong. All right. Install bearing, pa bearing pads at pier number one. Okay. Pier number one. Oh, that's over here. That's the uh, canal. This is pier one. And shim plate at the at the uh, at the pylon base. Okay, right there. Two, move main span from the staging area to final position. This is final position. Number three, grout out between precast section diaphragm and pylon base. Well, I guess they mean bases or base, but nevertheless, this was supposed to be grouted right here to close it in. That was the next step. And then stress pylon vertical post tension bars. You see this? Post tension bars. Now let's jump over to here again. And these that were supposed to be stressed to uh, lock this down. That would be over there. And a couple of people sold pipes up. And I think that's for the post when they lowered it down. 
it's going to be, uh, you know, where you do your tie-in. Let me finish this image for you while I'm here now. So this one, then I'll bounce here, and I'll give you an idea of what's going on here. So this is roughly uh, what we're talking about here, and literally, those are what that's what's left. This is what everyone's claiming that was sheared through this. Um, and someone asked me two videos back about, hey, what's this? What's this about? It was my teaser on the end of another video, and that was my teaser. And now we're getting get, take care of the teaser. Again, this is all these all the all the uh, products that were inside column twelve going up. So in reality, I would do this. I should have moved uh, this over even more like that. But we have the overlay of that other piece. But you can see that this is if this is the column. I can do that. I think you know and help you guys see it a little better. If that's the column. This is what was inside the column. And to say this sheared off number eleven sheared off, meaning pushed that way. Yeah, I have to say apply for a second. To say number eleven um, sheared off right at the bottom, pushing that direction. Oh, great. I did uh, grab it, didn't I? Um, just want to see if this lines up roughly with the, uh, so you know what I'm doing here. Yeah, that's lining up roughly with the, where the crack would be, I believe. And it's covered beautifully with some white coating here. And they're going to probably have some name for it saying it's reflective, et cetera. But, um, so they're saying it's sheared off. Well, it's sheared off. Yeah, sure thing. We're looking at all this, all these materials here are still in place all this this is still embedded so for 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 a piece of concrete doing a lot of shearing it's sure leaving a lot of obstructions in its way in its path of shear okay if i can say that word path of shear so you can see now it says stress pile stress pylon verticals post tension bars so there they are there they were supposed to be stressed that would actually lock it into place for for a lot of people who've also commented and told me oh that this could have moved etc cetera, etc cetera. well in theory, they did. The, they stressed that also, and so that just locks it down even more, creating a better hinge, as we know. In a, one of my videos, that the previous couple of videos back, it showed a beautiful hinging uh, effect here. Now we got some rebar here, reinforcement, and again, right here is the reinforcement coming up and over, and this rebar coming up and over. If you see it, and you've got this forces coming here, that could simply be the conflict that gives us our crack um, right here. That gives us our crack. That uh, you know, I hate to call it. It's in, insignificant, but I find it insignificant, except for the very significant, as I said in the previous video, that it, it identifies movement, and that's the movement you need to determine where did it come from. Um, and that's what you would close down a bridge for to figure out what's, what the heck's going on. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, we've got this white coating on the top of this bridge. Like I said, I don't think it's. I don't think it went there by mistake. Right here, um, uh, and this is the decking. This is the formwork, beautiful formwork setup. These appear to be real cars, and I made comment to someone uh, that wrote me that you can see clearly they did finish the uh, these uh, diagonals. Remember, it's late for me. Working on 24 hours and another five hours. Okay, so diagonals. Are, um, are already are already put on top of the deck. This is the temporary support that was supposed to stay while they transported it. Um, not these, obviously. They're in the way. None of, this, none of it on the first floor. The ground floor, the literally ground floor. All right, so we got the, uh, literal, the literal pad on the back from PPA to MCM hanging out. And, well, there's a lot of BPA people on this project uh, at this point. You can't turn a blind eye. Oh, I wanted to bring that up. That uh, I uh, the lot, any subcontractors would not be subject to, for example, OSHA's. Um, so if I was on there and I was a subcontractor and I got hurt, it's not reportable. I'm, I, my employees only would be reported. So maybe more people could get could have gotten hurt and it wouldn't even be reportable. Um, as far as I know, not even the death, unless it was caused by somebody else that killed me, for example. All right, BPA, literally consulting engineer, identified on the back there. BPA, um, I've seen her. Another thing is MCM, MCM, MCM. All right, uh, I think I did not post a video, but 
I don't see them with walkie-talkies. This is all screaming and hollering type setup, which I find very unprofessional. Nobody's got all the phones dialed in on group chat or anything else. I don't know. This is important because we see that there's other cameramen there. Um, it doesn't appear to be the same bodybuilder as the other person. And I'm going to move on from there. This is important um, because it's, the work came to a stop. And these uh, appear, appears to be a couple of people um, climbed on board. we got to huddle down here and I don't think they're talking about coffee. Um, so this is what, I'll, what I mean by that in a moment. Bear with me. All right, I talked to you about photography and it make distorts things. This lady is smaller than this bumper of this car. You see the scale? Now I might mess with your eyes if you look at it too long. She's smaller than there and now the car is huge. That's the lens effect. Um, nothing to be seen crazy there. So what data is in here? What data do you see here in a crushed vehicle? Well, you can actually get an awesome a lot amount of data from here. Um, if you uh, okay, um, if you look at the tires here, they're not compressed. We know this has a load rating on it. These tires do. They literally have a load rating. They have a load that will also burst them. But these are just not even not even affected. So this uh, these this um. There's practically no weight at all on this vehicle. Even though it's crushed, the back end is there. The front end is practically no load on it. Bringing yourself to this, a hunk of concrete popped off. And that's what I tell you about reinforcement, how it's also the weakness in concrete. It's the part that makes the voids that allow things like this to happen where a tired chunk of meat can come right out. All right? A tired chunk just jumped right off. That's going to troll some of you guys. Me calling it meat, right? Clearly, it is VSL, negligent company. Negligent company, I'm saying it. All this is in place. Here's where that crack is. Right about here behind this banner, perfectly. Um, the crack there. And a, I think this is these are crack sensors at one point. Here's where the column is. Um, so... Looking at this piece, this section of bridge here, they're, they're trying to elude that that one single crack that only takes off. It's, let me just drive at this. I think they want to pick something like that out. So, so obviously everybody can, be, it can go to court, somehow go to court. You're not allowed to use their findings, but it goes to court because if you, this is your preliminary and you're looking at this, to me, you're telling me you don't want to find anything wrong with this bridge. Because you or you're testing again, testing the public to see how bright they are, how much they're going to take, how much. So the cracks there, if you didn't remove that piece of concrete, again, it represents movement, which would be more indicator to this compressing forces and the two of them meeting, um, two different directions meeting, and, and so you get cracks in when two different directions meet. So it would be, you know, wrong, you know, misplaced expansion even it can be literally no it can really that can literally be nothing but it can but it should have been a hundred percent something we shut down the bridge this one crack alone but we had other cracks on this bridge we know about um in the column in these columns so i just find that amazing i think they were post-tensioning repairing the columns as i told you i don't think it was a mistake and again let's just nipping punching them in the face if you will this uh, ntsb report this is all in place you know this is not sheared away this is all in place. You know, plastic is in place there. Plastic is in place there. Now, they'd have did better if they'd have told me number 12. It, you know, cracks in number 12. Uh, you know, this upright right here. Um, the rest of this upright from here over. Cracks in number 12. Uh, um, buckled over there. But then you'd have to figure out the loads and what, what's the effect of number 12. Um, nevertheless, you see how minimum amount of forces are on here because they've got it you know so obstructed if you will and I don't mean that in a negative way obstruction is just you know filled how's that so again I think this is just this is just ridiculous just ridiculous is evaluating the emergence the emergence meaning the appearance right the appearance they appeared they emerged of cracks in the region of diagonals number two yeah it's the regional thing already talked about that they were already there though and they were there, as we know, weeks before. Um, this is what the, one of those hinges looked like. Um, not that hinge, I'm sorry. This is a different style hinge. So you guys look at bridges. You can look this up. Um, I sent it to someone else. Here it is right here. Uh, oh, okay, 1954. 
All right, that's just something for you to see. Now we're back to the camera crew guy again, cameraman again. Let's make it personal. You know the way they do it. You make it personal, and then, and then uh, it's got a little, a little more something to it. So I'm going to come back. That's the camera guy. He's grabbing his drone to put it down. And that's him there. He's holding his drone. And he's very confident about the drone because he can look somewhere else. So I put him as more of the, not just a uh, crew member, but a construction crew member who has a drone. I put him as uh, someone who's got some skill set with the uh, photography. And there's his equipment. And also, he doesn't have to wear his uh, shoes on this day. So his job is obviously not requiring um, shoes as a worker. And if you don't hurt your feet, uh, OSHA won't care. If you're not, in a, you know, you're not somewhere going to hurt your feet. There's the part of the bridge I say is still existing. This is the transition from here to here. This is the part that everybody said sheared off. Yet I clearly showed you that the obstructions are in the bridge still in this column on the ground. Right here. Still there on the ground. I mean in the decking. There's no breaking of it. There's no separation of it. So this will be my last video to this. And normally uh, that's that. So post tensioning. We're going to post tension this downwards. Pulling it down. Um, anchoring it down as you saw in the images. I don't know where it is. I don't know where that post tension pockets are to pull it downwards. Making it personal now. Watch this. All these people are looking up. This is the end. This is 2 to 11 node. Happens to be blue. Okay, so we know it's not school colors at this point because this was, you don't need them. It's, it's advertised as school colors in this photograph. It's also cropped and edited. You need this guy's full video. His full video will show his intent of hiding something if it's not, the, the original is not blue. And, he, and it's cropping this out, clearly cropping this out. Otherwise, all bets are off, and I stand corrected. All right. So they're all looking here, and we're going the other way, wrong way. Sorry. And there they are again, everyone. Look at my man here looking up. This is out of a screen capture, out of a video. And they're all stepping back and evaluating this end. This end is very significant. This bridge came to a stop at this point, so you guys know. And they all just spent some time evaluating when his camera when his uh, camera flew over I was able to get a screen amp image here I could spend some time trying to lighten this up and everything else but hey if they wanted the truth they can get to the truth with uh, with a lot of stuff watch them right so we're back to the flyover and here's again the holes and magically it's black and these guys are all focused on 11 I think this is the monitoring equipment here at the end of the bridge in there something must have triggered they stopped. I have a video showing that they've got a blue light right about here that's flashing. Again, this shows the the uh, where this stops. The concrete stops. You can count all these up and you see that there's no sharing taking place. I use this image to snatch up to do my uh, overlay um, distortion. I wouldn't know how to get the angle right now. That would be too much like work. And I just grabbed a piece of white to do that. We already know about this. What did I say? Fake wrong. All right. Location. And where is figure number seven? Seven, as was mentioned in in the other uh, in the other thing. Now we come back to the right. This is we already went over that 2017, and wrapping it up soon. So again, that didn't do anything. Um, this little crack they're referring to, as you guys see in there, I think it's you can see where, where it goes nowhere. It goes across this piece of reinforcement. It's compressing this second one at, when it was in the other location. Could have put forces on this rebar and caused the crack to go, but more importantly, are the longitudinal cracks down that darn.